ask to unmute. Are you mute? Oh, because you have this unmuted, right? Yeah. Your phone? Yeah, I have, okay. Yeah. I'm all. <laughs> all right. I hate that one. I never know like where I'm supposed to be looking. Okay. I'm looking here. Okay. Right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited for today's uh, workshop as part of the, well, you can see them over there. I can't reach the monthly Bobo box. And um, this month, the theme is, oh my God, what is the theme? This month, <laughs> like space. I know, I'm just like all over the place. Like it's April 1st, but I still feel like I'm in October of 2019. So yeah. <laughs> um, this month's box is all about celestial celebrations. And so I wanted to have kind of all things space themed. And I know that space and kind of this idea of the cosmos means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Some people are really sciencey. Some people are like really spiritually driven. So I wanted to create a little bit of everything. Um, but I think at the heart of it, it's all about nature. And so obviously I wanted to bring on my amazing friend, Brittany Paul of Brittany Paul Inc. And if you got this monthly box, which obviously you probably did if you saw this video, or you're one of Brittany's fans or one of Eunice's fans, who's the other artist that we're going to be working with, um, you will have gotten this little kit and you're probably wondering what you're supposed to do with it. So I have Brittany here who's going to show us how to make an incredible little um, wooden watercolor piece that we're going to do together. I am actually pretty bad at watercolor. I just struggle with it. I don't know how to control the paint. I never know what I'm doing. I'm never happy with it in the end because it doesn't look like how I envisioned it would be. So I'm here hoping that uh, between Brittany and Eunice that you guys will be able to guide me in the right direction and for all of you guys to follow along at home. So without further ado, Brittany, welcome. Hello. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm glad you invited me because I do like to put stars in almost all my pieces and my big affinity for space uh, started with the realization that all things that are on the earth have some kind of particles of stardust in them. So we're all connected in that way, um, which is why I implement that in there to kind of like physically connect us with nature. So um, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny um, because I also have a, a pretty good understanding that we are the universe and the universe is us. We're made up of all the same things. Mm -hmm. And Craig, my husband went up to me one day and he was like, babe, uh, you're like a tiny universe because the universe is in you. Uh Oh, hold on. I'm <laughs> getting a call. Decline. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll edit this little part out, but, um, <laughs> Okay, that happened last time. Like I should probably put like, do not disturb on or something. Anyways. Um, so Craig, uh, once told me, he was like, you're like a tiny little universe. Cause the universe is in you and you're in the universe. And my first thought was, oh, you think I'm tiny? <laughs> so, not the universe part. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just that I'm tiny. I mean, I'm going to hold on to that for as long as I can. So. <laughs> um, okay. So why don't you walk us through kind of what we have here and what we're going to be making? Sure. So um, I love to work predominantly on wood. Um, that started when I was first getting into being a full-time artist. I was drawing traditionally on paper and then framing it up, um, but it just looked so sterile to me and like you couldn't touch it and I love touching things. So I was like, I want to make art that I can touch, you know, so like drawing directly on wood and like doing a clear coat finish on top makes it just like impermeable to like fingerprints and all of that. So you can touch it and hang it up and not deal with like Windex and making sure there's no condensation, like ruining it and all of that yeah. like fancy art stuff, you know? So um, yeah, so that's why I'm kind of introducing everybody to working on wood. It's just like a little thin banner piece of wood. Um, you can get this really at any craft store. You can go to Michael's. They have tons of different wood pieces that you could draw on. Um, and we'll be doing uh, basically this little pin that you guys have, or if you don't have it, um, you could always just check out my website or uh, Angie's and there's a picture on there. Um, and loosely follow it if you'd like. You can copy it exactly, but um, I'll be loosely following it to show you that 
it doesn't have to look exactly like it. Um, but if you want to trace it just to get comfortable with drawing and painting, then you can do that too. Um, so what Angie's going to be demonstrating is putting a piece of carbon paper down, which is just like paper that when you draw on one side, it kind of transposes the image on the other side. Um, and then once that is down, you'll be able to uh, paint it with whatever colors you want. Um, I have like a full watercolor set. But if you don't have that, if you just have the kit, you can use that too. Um, and it doesn't have to be like realistic, like cactus can be purple if you want them to, <laughs> they don't have to be green. Um, I mean, there's purple cactus that exists, so there's that. Um, and then after that, you take a pen and we have these like micron pens here um, and outline all of the details and you can add little stippling and, and all of that. And then towards the end is the fun part where you can put little white stars all over it um and then you I can use like, yeah I and mean, you can use gold if you want to um i do do a lot of gold in my work as well but it kind of depends on my mood so if you're feeling gold you can do that <laughs> <laughs> so like it depends like how many glasses of wine in you are on this yeah project. It's, it's like do i feel like glittery today like do i need exactly. a little extra <laughs> It has to be a mood. Like you can't just wake up and be like, "Today is the day I use." Do you just you just know when you know? Yeah, um, I know. For me, it's typically late at night. I'm a glittery person. You don't do <laughs> glitter in the morning. If you do glitter in the morning, then it's not special anymore. Like you got to have some exactly. water to work into it. So like twilighty, but <laughs> <laughs> twilighty, but without all the terrible acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I have a lot of like people who get really into the meaning of my art, and they're like why do you keep some of your pieces black and white and others colored? I'm like, I just didn't feel like color that day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, I don't know. No reason. Don't question the process, yo. <laughs> yeah. All righty, well, let's get started. Um, just for folks at home, for those that follow me, I am in my Airstream, which means that I am in a tin can, there are lots of noises around. You'll hear birds, you'll hear fans going off. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that the audio is crystal clear for y'all, um, but I apologize in advance. Um, if you hear snoring, that might be Brittany's dog, Jack. <laughs> He's so, like right over there sleeping too. <laughs> yeah, like nobody's passing gas. It's just, well, he's probably passing gas. I've been around her dog. He is, <laughs> he's gnarly. So, okie doke. So let's get started. So right now I've got my, wood piece I have my carbon paper which totally reminds me of credit cards like in the 80s when you had to go yeah. to um I have my reference piece here and then I've got I'm assuming I'm going to be tracing with this right yeah mm -hmm. okay and I've got my lapis my pencil so show me the way <laughs> so um go ahead and put your carbon paper on your wood piece um make sure it's the side that actually transfers um it's usually the non-shiny side is the transfer side um and you could always okay. just do like a quick little draw yeah. on the back of your piece or oh. on a piece of paper just so you know like you're working on the right side cool okay um, I did not include this in the kit, but if you just got like a clip, like that'll probably make your life a little bit easier or washi tape, yeah. right? To hold things down. Cause then um, it'll move around and all that. Okay. Um, and you can trace as much or as little of the piece as you want. If you want to challenge yourself, you can do just like a soft outline of the whole piece and then do the stippling and detail yourself. Um, or you can just do it all. Um, just full training wheels, which is totally fine. Um, when, okay. when learning the best way to learn is just to copy first and then um, get confident and do it your own later. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start tracing. We'll also have um, Brittany start. She, you're going to freehand it, right? Yeah. And um, even though I, even though I freehand, um, I still can't draw a perfect circle. And just to show you, if you don't have like those cool little protractor like circle devices. I'm literally oh. just using like my vitamin cap. So it's like a good size. <laughs> Everybody. So now we all like, know what kind of vitamins Brittany has. It looks like Flintstone gummies. They're like gummies. <laughs> they are gummies. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time to swallow pills, please. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need water, you know, like, come on. <laughs> 
well. Um, I'm very excited to, I also cannot do what, I've seen those videos of like a guy going up to a whiteboard and he just goes like, <laughs> and it's like a perfect circle. I'm like, you're the devil. That shouldn't be allowed. That takes a lot of practice. And I don't even think that equates to like drawing skill that just, he just practiced a circle a lot. Yeah. So this tracing bit kind of reminds me of like, I used to teach a chalk lettering class when like teaching classes in person was a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I will share one piece of advice for the folks at home. When you're doing a trace like this and you're trying to get a template and a transfer, like every once in a while, like just check and make sure it's transferring because I used to do these chalk classes and, you know, we would do really large pieces because it's chalk and they would sit there and they would be white knuckling it, like tracing everything. And then they would lift the paper and like, it didn't transfer. <laughs> so oh so yeah. Much. So make sure you go back and check. That's why it's good to have washi tape or a clip um, just to kind of hold things in place. So as you're checking, it doesn't, you know, screw it up. But, uh, it's always good to check before going too deep into the mistake so like as an artist and this is probably a question you weren't expecting to get first of all everyone please go and follow Brittany because she just makes the most amazing and magical things her talent is ridiculous like there's there's artists and then there's artists capital a I define Brittany as artist capital A. And then Aww. there's people like me. I'm a fartist, which is a big <laughs> artist where I just love to just create and I don't have any technical skills. <laughs> and then there's people who are, who are fartists, lower F, where they want to be fartists. So they're faux artists trying to learn and get their bearings. So we're kind of all over the place. But Brittany is capital A artist. Um, oh. For people that want to learn, you know, like what we're doing here, trying to recreate your art, it's really cool. It's a good way for us to get familiar with learning new materials. But like as an artist, you know, a big discussion that we often hear is don't copy, don't trace. Um, that's somebody else's work, which I totally agree. Kind of what is your approach to that when when you teach workshops and, you know, people don't know how to draw, but they want to learn? Right. I, I mean, I, I would say a lot of the time, the biggest way to learn how to draw is by copying other people and um that's just a good way to get technique down because not like the traditional techniques that you learn in school are great and they're great for foundational learning but you're not going to learn those like little interesting things that people do that are a little bit different um that sets them apart without like kind of testing it out yourself and like you find that if you keep uh, a big portfolio of artists that you're really into that you're not going to end up copying just one. You're going to end up kind of accumulating a bunch of mini skills that you've picked up along the way and just like repackage it into what is you now. So like over time after like practice and, and all of that, you become your own uh, artist. But I would say on that note, if you're copying, um, what's the purpose of it? And are you going to make money with it? Um, so if you're making money Boom. with it, that's the biggest issue is if you're making money off of copied art, which is a big no-no. <laughs> yeah, or even um, if you're posting it on social media and you don't credit the artwork mm -hmm. or the artist. Yeah. Um, but that's a really good, that's a really good point because I think in this age of like Pinterest, Instagram, you're seeing things all the time and you can get inspired by something and not even know it. And like later on down the road, you create something that you think like, I just created this and it might look or reference something that you've seen before. And we're seeing so many images and we're following so many artists that sometimes it can be hard to know the origin of that inspiration. So, but that's a really good idea. I like the idea of following lots of artists. And then, um, you know, I think any good artist is about what's your personal take and point of view. So, mm -hmm. you know, the technical styles can be the same. But, you know, if you're just copying other people's work, it's always going to be a shittier version of it. So, yeah. you know, find what inspires you, but like, you know, put your own flair, spin, technique on it. So I like that. Very, very cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm tracing and I'm, I'm not doing like a perfect job. I'm going to assume that's okay, right? Yeah, of course. Because you can always fill in and tweak and, you know, do whatever you want to make it yours. Um, you don't want to copy it exactly unless you do and you're really good at copying. That's fine. 
you know, I did so bad in school and I copied then. So like, I feel like I'll just not copy. And I'll try. <laughs> it got me nowhere except in trouble. And I still got terrible grades. So yeah, <laughs> that's me in a nutshell. I, I somehow got terrible grades, but also was the teacher's pet at the same time. Cause I, I love learning, but I'm not really that good at learning sometimes. <laughs> You've basically explained my entire life. Uh, we've, you know, Brittany and I have talked about this before. So I have ADHD. All many of you already know that I talk about it all the time. And um, I learned in school like that half of passing wasn't actually learning anything. It was like doing the work, and I was really mm-hmm. good at doing the work. I was really bad at executing. So like, if there was a a project, like I had to do a book report. Um, you know, most people would stand up there, read, you know, their assignment, their paper, and they talk about the book and then maybe show like some slides and photos. But for me, I would go so extra and I would like recreate scenes from the book using sock puppets. I would never do the assignment. I'd basically be going like super extra. And the teachers were always so impressed. Like, God, she didn't do the assignment, but her delivery was so good. (laughs) And I feel like that's how I kind of survived through school was just like faking it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like you and I have talked about this before. It's like sometimes the, the delivery is just as important as the content. (laughs) Oh, totally. Yeah. I did the same thing. I was like the trifold presentation queen. Like I was like, (laughs) I'm doing, I'm doing a study about the strongest gum, like which gum lasts the longest. And I did a freaking trifold of like all the different pieces of gum. Like I put the actual chewed piece of gum on there. <laughs> I was like, this is science, right? That's kind of a science. Yeah, that was me. I'm like, I need better, harder cardstock, better cardstock. <laughs> and then the glitter, oh, glitter just like put it over the top maybe that's why I'm so into stars putting them all over my stuff I'm like I don't know about this drawing but let's put stars all over it so how did you get into like this kind of nature style painting I guess first of all like your work is incredible like um so if you have not yet followed Brittany or gone to check her out she does a lot of um, like scientific centric drawings. Is that an appropriate way to, to say it? Like, yeah, I would like say anatomically like, correct scientific mm-hmm. style. Like imagine um, Darwin's books, his sketchbooks, how they were like these really um, specific detailed drawings. So she does a lot of that. You can see that from um, the bookmark that she included in the kit. Um, how did you get started in this? And like, did you, where did you learn it? Are you self-taught? Uh, yeah, so um, I was always super into science in general, and my favorite classes in school were geology and biology and being able to like decipher the different body parts and different um, genders and, you know, um, the different phases of a caterpillar and things like that. So um, for me, like identifying things is really fun, like being out in nature and being able to say that's a whatever plant and like knowing it and understanding what it can do and like it's living conditions and all of that I've always just been really into that um and so I think I was really drawn to making sure my drawings are anatomically correct but at the same time um I'm a weirdo and I wanted it to like reflect that so (laughs) a lot of my pieces are surreal in that way where there's they're animals, but they're in um, positions that are maybe not as natural, like um, surrounded by botanicals, like in a very like surreal, ethereal way um, with like stars all over the place and drawing every single hair and every single feather, even though in nature, you can't actually see those things, but I'm just like so fascinated by all the little parts of of, uh, creatures that, I like to kind of bring that out in my pieces. Yeah, the attention to detail in your work is phenomenal. Um, but it, yeah, it's this like mix of fantasy and like reality. Like you'll mm-hmm. have like a whale in a wreath with like plants and it's like, oh, okay. But um, if you go to her Instagram, 
check out her time lapse videos. Those are the best. I wish you would just, yeah. I know it's hard to do those. I, I never make videos. I'm so bad at it. Yeah. Um, but those are like my favorite. I could watch them all day. Um, and it's so kind of obnoxious that I'm tracing and you are almost done with your freehand drawing. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost more freeing to just draw yourself because it's like if you quote unquote mess it up, it's like, are you messing it up? Or are you just creating something totally new? Okay, Bob Ross, <laughs> your happy little mistakes. I actually have that in a pin on my backpack. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. Well, because he's a he's an icon, man. That guy's great. What was I gonna do here? So, like, what's um you know, you've, you've taught so many workshops, like, I don't, so many, I don't know how you do it. They're really tiring to do, but you yeah. taught so many workshops to people of all sorts of skill levels. Like what's mm -hmm. your kind of go-to advice um, when people who have never really drawn start taking a workshop of yours? Um, so I always treat my workshops a lot like my favorite yoga sessions I've ever been to. Um, I always appreciate it when the teacher is able to kind of show you the basics and then let you run with the basics and like spend some time, you know, building up the flower that you're drawing maybe, um, while also still continuing to build upon that and be like, okay, for those who are comfortable, um, go ahead and, you know, try to detail the, the stamen of the flower. Like maybe some people would rather just do like a little dot, like a little, oh, right, that's the, like the middle part of a flower. All right, there we go. And then there's other people like me who are like, no, I want to know like how to draw the actual like sexual organs of a flower. Like it's an actual Hot. like, you know, <laughs> diagram, you know, so um yeah so I would say before doing my class don't be intimidated because I'm always like trying to make it as open as possible for all skill sets I have kids that join my classes and they're always very respectable they're they're not like yelling in the background or anything kids like that want to learn how to draw really like are focused and they're like just as great of a participant as a full-grown adult person who's never drawn before so yeah well I mean yeah. you're already doing a great job of like we have one piece of work but you've like made it accessible by scaling it so you're showing us the freehand mm -hmm. I'm doing the tracing version there's um and then kind of depending on how much detail you want to put in really depends on you know kind of where you want to push yourself and um right. that makes a lot of sense yeah when I would teach the chalk lettering classes it took me a while to figure this out, but the first few that I did, um, so much of my energy teaching the class was um, having to manage people's expectations of their own artwork. Mm -hmm. So about, you know, I was spending a lot of time, you know, telling people would complain like, oh, it doesn't look like yours. This is really messy. My penmanship sucks. Just like all this like negativity. And when one person says it, it really spreads like wildfire, yeah. especially amongst a group of strangers. Cause sometimes what they'll do is, to make someone else feel really good, they'll, instead of praise them, like, no, it's really good. They'll say like, mine's bad too. And then it was just the whole class was just saying, I have terrible penmanship, which then made me feel terrible because I felt like people weren't happy with the course because they thought they were going to achieve something. Like they were going to yeah. walk out being professional hand lettering artists. And that was yeah. a real big eye opener for me. And it kind of taught me a lot about, um, you know, where are you in your artistic journey and like what to get out of it and sometimes what to get out of it is not the actual end result it's the actual learning part of it so yeah and yeah. and that's the other thing and like in my workshops i actually write on my workshops um I, I don't type them all up. I type them a little bit and then I just go in and handwrite all over it. And then I photocopy it basically, because that's yeah. just how I, I learn. Yeah. That's how I teach, you know? Um, so for the but, kids out there that were born after <laughs> the year 2004, photocopy <laughs> this big machine <laughs> and you lift it up and it takes a photo. Yes. <laughs> So like I, I put little affirmations all over it. I'm like, you're doing great. Like, like perfectionism isn't key. Like, you know, mistakes are um, how you learn. And like, I'm 
constantly just being like, that's awesome. Like the, I love how you did this and this, like I praise the things that you're doing well in and just highlight that instead of like what you were expecting, not coming out the way you wanted to. I'm like, you don't know how many sketches I've done that are like half done. And I was just like, I hate it so much. I'm like, I don't want to see that ever again. I just throw it in a box and forget about it. So you don't see that on social media. You don't see how many nope. times artists like throw their art away because they don't like it. <laughs> so. I'm surprised more art dealers don't just hang out in the dumpsters of art studios because there's yeah. probably some serious gems in there. Don't look at my trash. It's a lot of candy wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> right? Putting it out there. My trash has no art in it. It's just candy wrappers and snacks and juice boxes. <laughs> um, okay, so um, are you? Oh, are you done sketching already? I am. You can't really oh. see it. Um, it's hard to see. You know what? But... I, I can actually see it on the big screen. It looks pretty yeah. good, and I know that it'll start coming together once we start drawing. Yeah. Um, I do want to let people know. So in your palette, um, you'll be seeing uh, some other colors in here. I have yet to get the paint. So I'm actually working um, to get some of these browns and greens. I'm working off another palette. Um, but just like Brittany said, you can really use any colors you want. Who cares if your, your antlers are purple and your cactus is blue? Like, do yeah. you, baby boo? So, um, but because I want to recreate her piece as much as possible, I'm going to use some of my other paints for now. Um, we'll let you get started. Or she's going in and she's tracing more. Okay, while she's tracing more, I'm going to talk and ask her another question. Um, oh. I don't know a lot about watercolor paints. I know that there's pans. I know that there's like kid watercolor, like Crayola that come in palettes. There's ones like these, um, which it looks like you've got there. And mm -hmm. there's some that come in tubes, which is what this is. Like, do you have a preference? Like what's the real big difference? Um, and yeah, like, what are your thoughts on the different kinds of paints? Um, so I know artists who are incredible artists and they collect their work who legit use those ones that you get for like $3 that come in like, it's like a row of like oval shaped little pans. Yes. Yeah, Which, the like what, Crayola kind. Yeah. And they make incredible art. Um, it's not necessarily That's like- cool. Yeah, it's not necessarily the brand that matters. It's like how you're applying it and whether you want it to be archival or not. Like if that's important to you. If you want your piece to last forever, like for longer than you're living, um, then that's where the quality and the brand matters. Um, so when you're, when you're shopping for that, make sure that they're pigmented and they say like archival quality um, watercolor. Okay. Yeah, but other than that, like it really doesn't matter what you use. It's going to end up looking um, amazing. Like it'll, it'll look amazing if you just put the effort into it. Um, the only other thing too, is if you're really picky about like pigmentation and you want like really deep colors, you're going to have to pay for that. Um, but cheaper stuff, you're going to need to do a lot more layers um, in order to get that same pigmentation. So. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. See, I didn't know that. And I didn't, um, like, I'm also embarrassed as an artist. I don't really know the importance of, what is it, archival? Archival? How do you pronounce yeah, that? Yeah, ar archival. Yeah. Archival. Like, I know mm -hmm. that those terms are important. Like, um, like there's archival paper as well. Do you mm -hmm. have a preference? Like, you always use archival um, inks and paper? Yeah, I try to use um, cotton paper. It's the... Ooh in my opinion, the easiest to work with. And cold pressed, is, cold pressed cotton archival paper is my favorite because it doesn't have any bumps on it. Um, oh. when, I, when I print on paper, I like to print on hot press, which is like the little texture bumps because yeah. it looks cool. Um, yeah. But to draw on it is not fun for me because I'm like trying to do all this like detail and ink and yeah. there's all these little bumps in the way. So yeah. Yeah, I find that like, um, it's like kind of toothy, like the yeah. paper is, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the quality of your, your tools isn't really that important. Um, when you're, especially when you're first starting, it's kind of like when you're first starting any hobby, like you want to 
leave it open to your own preference that you start building up. Like over time, you're going to be like, oh, I don't really like, you know, insert name brand. Um, yeah. But everyone has their own preference. So you can start by copying somebody else and being like, oh, this person uses Princeton brand, you know, paintbrush. I'll try that. And then maybe it doesn't work out for you. But um, yeah, like I, so in the kit, this is not the best uh, paintbrush. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people just have paintbrushes at home. You can get a really good one at Michael's for like, you know, five to eight dollars with a coupon. That is like really, really nice and will last you a long time. So um, if you have one of those, like by all means, use one of those. I'm going to use the one that's included just to kind of have some consistency with what you're getting and going to be creating. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I, I'm, yeah, I think uh, kind of understanding the materials that you're buying, um, how you're going to use them is super important and know that it could possibly impact the end result of your work. So mm -hmm. if you're not happy with something, you know, maybe it's the tools that you're using, the paints that you're using, are they not um, pigmented enough? You know, is the brush, like you'll see in this one, like see how it's kind of fluffy. It doesn't really have as pointed of an end. We might be able to fix that by wetting it. Um, but again, you know, if you're not achieving a look that you want, uh, maybe consider the tools and materials that you're using. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes that creates a style and accident. So even if it comes out like not the way you want, um, like I know an artist who they only paint with a flat edge paintbrush and they create these like little flat edge, like kind of um, splotches everywhere but it's very flat looking and they do it on purpose now I'm sure that's something that they just kind of came across as they were like messing around with different paintbrushes yeah I mean I have a very strong feeling that we're gonna I'm gonna be doing that approach with this because I'm looking <laughs> at some of these detailing but I have I have a few things in my head so we'll be good nice yeah um, my so piece is like not not even looking the same at all but I love kind of it riffing off the original so what are your favorite like if you could just draw one animal forever and ever birds <laughs> no you love your birds girlfriend <laughs> loves her birds I love it and some people have even like they've even messaged me and they're like oh more birds I'm like what <laughs> what's wrong with my birds okay for people out there don't do that don't be like oh more birds oh because that's only buddy that's only somebody's passion that you're slowly crapping on i know right you be, you be careful you don't say that about Brittany because she's going to tell the birds to shit on your car <laughs> <laughs> she has the powers to do that hey if they're a specific breed like they're cor the corvid family they have a, an incredible memory that's generational so they'll tell their kids that mm -hmm. so and so angie's not so nice and the, exactly. the kids will start treating you like shit too do not mess with ravens and crows they have an incredible memory yes all righty Yeah, I'm just darkening it a little bit so you guys can see it. But um, cool. after you're done with the pencil process, um, that's when I go over it with watercolor. And okay. um, don't worry about it like spilling over the edge or anything like that, like bleeding out. Um, you can always just transform it into something else. Like a lot of the times I just transform my mistake and nobody's ever going to know it was yeah. a mistake. So. Do you, um, for this piece of wood like you got you can get these at a craft store that are ready to be painted on if someone mm -hmm. just has like laminate or pine mm -hmm. you know sitting around can they just put watercolor on it or do they have to treat it oh yes so the boards if you got the box the bobo box um i actually put a clear gesso on it and um what gesso is is when you see a canvas and it's got like it almost looks like painted fabric that paint that's on top is gesso and it's a primer mm. that helps your paint adhere to it without bleeding um okay. so that's yeah, basically so it's not what gonna it is. go into like the grain of the wood and start creating mm -hmm. those lines 
yes. And if you're like me and you're plant-based and vegan, um, you can use watercolor ground. It's the uh, same thing. It's just different name and made differently. Um, gesso has animal fats in it. So if that's uh, a concern of yours. You can that's actually that. really good to know. Okay. Yeah. What was the one that you said that you use? Uh, watercolor that's ground. Watercolor ground. Okay. Yeah. And if you're like me, which is trans fat and Cheeto based, um, you'll <laughs> want to use like Dorito dust um, to really <laughs> fill that in and it yes. will taste delicious. <laughs> so all of us have different dietary needs. Just want to make sure that there's something out there for everybody. <laughs> okay, show off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't believe you just freehanded that. Like it's nobody's <laughs> business. After a while, it's, it just becomes automatic, but that's lots of practice. And a lot of people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, I, it's seriously, like, I know it's kind of like beating a dead horse, but it is just practice and drawing the same shit over and over and over again. Amen. <laughs> but, um, we'll have, we're going to have a little art therapy right now. Our, our artist therapy talk on the, on the red couch, but, um, Ooh. For me, one of my biggest um, pet peeves is, you know, people will see my art on Instagram. They'll see me create things really quickly and they'll say like, can you do this, this logo for me? Can you make this commission for me? And I'll tell them the price and they'll say, but it took you five minutes to do it. Like, it's going to oh, be really easy. Can you just do this? It's going to be really simple. Yes. And, you know, when people go like, it'll take you a half hour. And I said, I always reply back. No, it took me you know, 40 years to be able to do it this fast. Yes. So, um, when I look at, you know, Brittany create this, like I can already think of people going like, oh, I want that as a tattoo. Can you draw this for me real quick? And that's really yeah. not how it works because there's different reasons that we'll create something and different speeds and kind of this point where you're just like, okay, this is good enough for what I need. But when you're creating something for hire, like your um, mental state is totally different. You're thinking about the client, you're thinking about you, you're thinking about the final piece and making sure that everything's perfect. It takes so much emotional energy. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, you, you gotta pay for that. You gotta pay for that. And so exactly. don't, don't take what Brittany's creating here on the fly and think like, oh, that, that's really easy to do. Um, it mm -hmm. took, you know, decades for her to figure out how to do this, you know, arguably yeah. almost half a century even though you're not that old, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I All mean, that yeah. knowledge and skill you've accumulated from other people and, and the studying and the, and everything. So mad yeah. respect. Yeah. And I would say a lot, like, that's something that we're telling ourselves constantly because artists <laughs> are the worst at charging what they deserve. So yeah, um, we love to devalue ourselves. Yeah. So if an artist is putting a price on it, they took a lot of time and, um, a lot of emotional energy, like putting that price in to their piece. Yeah. And so it's hard or, or already for them just to do that, let alone have to have that like kind of icky conversation of like, this is why I matter and my skill matters, you know? Yeah. So, so. whenever you ask someone for a quote on a price or you want a commission, just know that as soon as that email is sent back with a number, uh, that artist is shitting themselves into your <laughs> Yeah. Pretty much. It has, nothing and, to, it has nothing to do with, are they going to accept it? It's just, are they going to look at this and like balk their eyes? Mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So. Cool. So I just freehanded this guy and I'm not going to do too much. Usually I like to do the pencil very lightly, but just for um, showing you guys how to do it, I did it dark um, and erasing your pencil marks after you're done. Um, doing ink or painting or anything, that's totally up to you too, because I, I know plenty of artists who their pencil marks are a part of their piece and that's their style. So yeah, that can be actually too. Genevieve does that, which I really love. Mm -hmm. um, my studio mate, Le Petit Elephant. Um, I remember yeah. when I was starting to learn watercolor, I was so mad. I was like, oh, how do you get these pencil marks out of there? And then I saw a lot of her work actually leaves them in and she embraces it and it just gives it so much character. So mm -hmm. definitely, yeah, it doesn't have to, you don't want it to necessarily look like a photocopy of something or a digital drawing. It's okay to have those little, little marks along the way. Definitely. Okay. So the next step, um, is totally 
up to the effect that you want. Um, what you can do, you can go over ink now and then okay. do the paint on top. But what that's gonna do, it's gonna dull down a lot of your detail. Um, mm -hmm. So if you like that look, you like the muted look and you don't like harsh lines, then you can do that. Um, or you can go paint first and color in all of your pencil work. And then like I like to do, use the pen to fix all of the mess ups that you did when you're painting. <laughs> so that that's... sounds like that'll be perfect. <laughs> and that will be my approach. So <laughs> cool. All righty, so what should we start with considering you've got like some details, some areas that have a lot, like do you kind of work top to bottom? Do you just, some people they're like printers, they just kind of work in one edge and go all the way down. Some like yeah. to do large swaths of area first. What's your approach? My, my approach is I like to just to do um, like one color at a time so like I'll do like the green cactus first and then I'll do the like reddish purpley flowers second um but that's because I like to finish a subject so I like to see a finished cactus and then move on to something else and finish that and that kind of keeps me fueled for the rest of the drawing um, versus some people like to kind of do one layer um, and then they build on that layer until it's finished. Um, but I'm just so impatient and I get so angry when I don't see finished work that I just, I need to like finish things as I go. Um, Makes sense. But, but yeah, and like, you'll just find like, you'll be like me and you're like, you start getting frustrated at a certain style. And then now, you know, I don't like doing it this way. And that's just kind of how you know what um your favorite style is so cool yeah okay so i've got my brush here and kind of with that approach i'm gonna start um it's a little shadowy on this side i apologize y'all <laughs> um, i'm gonna start with some of these flowers so i don't have green on me i do in this palette but i kind of want to create like purple cacti purple and pink i'm currently mm -hmm. in palm springs in the desert and i have some purple and pink um, cacti out in our little garden. So I'm going to do that first and I'm going to mix um, using some of the blue and some of the pink that came in the palette that you got. And then Brittany's going to work off of her artist palette. And you can, um, there's so many different ways to do watercolor. Um, and like Angie was saying, like th the inability to control it is something you kind of just have to roll with after a while. It's no. frustrating at first, but um, I want to hear, to... hear that I can control it. This is no, my own you, personal... you, you just have to like, just decide, okay, I'm okay with the lack of control. Um, and I think that's why I enjoy it so much because I'm a control freak and it helps me relax. Um, uh, but you can do like water first, so you can fill in your shape with water and that's going to be a more chaotic approach um oh, okay i because i started with the paint i should start with a little bit of water yeah so you can paint. do water straight to paint or you can um put the water down on your piece first and then um take some paint and then draw on the side draw on the side like on the border oh here. i see okay yeah and you see how it's kind of there's like bleeding everywhere um then you can dry your brush and kind of blend it in um and this approach is going to be way less like literal it's not going to look like a, a cactus and then that way you can dip your brush and grab a different color and I'm going to do something a little crazy here for people at home. So if you can see, let me see if I can do a little focus, focus on this little bad boy. It's a little bit tough, but um, when you look at it after you wet it, there's a lot of these little rogue hairs that kind of um, stick out. I'm just going to trim some of them so that I have a little bit of a cleaner edge. So bear with me here. Rogue hairs. I do that with my bangs. It's a very bad habit to do. Is it? Because I just started doing that and now you're telling me. Great. Where were you yesterday? That's what my hairstylist told me. She's like, stop doing that. Oh, really? Yeah. You heard it, you heard it here first, guys. 
<laughs> but Basically with what she's saying is don't trim your bangs or your paintbrush. Okay, back at it. So I'm here. So for the folks at home, I'm just taking a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the pink and I'm making this kind of cool purple color. And um, I'm kind of adding it to my edges. And if you have too much color that you put down, um, just when you have a dry brush, so dry, clean and dry your brush completely, it acts like an eraser. Oh. Apologies if you can hear my husband in the background. I heard working out of an airstream is hard. <laughs> or working from home with your significant other. Yes, it's definitely um, a lesson in, you know, patience and patience <laughs> and not um, and not murdering your spouse. <laughs> yes, that's key in a relationship, I hear. Yes. And the more dry your watercolor is, um, the more control you have. So if you're feeling like things are getting a little too crazy and you wanna like control the watercolor, just dry your paintbrush, dip it in some paint. And now you have pretty much like acrylic paint at that point. Yeah, I'm noticing that with, um, cause I'm using the tube stuff here. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've been trying to, get into this watercolor game um, just because I love how it looks. It's a, a lot of a struggle, like I said, with this control, getting the paint to behave the way that I want. Um, actually, Brittany got me onto this brand called Ruby Mountain Paint Co. Um, mm -hmm. And so she does kind of a lot of these earth tones. And so my plan when I came out here was to do a lot of painting and only work with one set of colors. Um, but I started working with the paint and I was like, oh, it's just so hard what I have envisioned in my head is not what ends up on the paper so um like what are some of your tips for helping people learn to let go um, like how do they uh, how do they embrace that so you embrace your own kind of chaos so a good way to do that is um, any practice with drawing in general um, draw like a ton of little boxes on a piece of paper um, kind of like, like this, like when you do oh, your so swatches. swatches, yeah, your swatches of color, just do a bunch of boxes and then try different techniques in, in each one of them. And then you can decide which lack of control you like the most <laughs> and then yeah. use that to your advantage. Um, so that, yeah, it's still not, you know, perfect, but at least, you know, how it's going to act and how you interact with that, with that type of um, technique. So, cause I, I mean, someone can teach you all day how to, how to paint, but at the end of the day, it's like, you're, you're different than them. You know, like what they say and do is going to look totally different than, than how you actually implement that skill. Yeah. So, um, I mean, what, I, I, what about I, um, letting it dry? for watercolor. Oh, I hate doing that. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Patience is not a requirement. <laughs> no, it is not. I am not a patient person. Um, that's why I love the, the drying your brush technique um, and try to go lightly when you first start because when you go like a lot of paint all at once that's when you get in the danger zone of having to wait to put your next layer on um so build up instead of like going all at once um and then over time as you continue to paint you'll know like how far you can push it um, yeah so it's definitely like a feeling thing because yeah. i don't have the feeling yet but i totally know what you mean yeah Wow. 
<laughs> yours looks it lo okay first of all it looks a little bit like a mango from here and now i'm <laughs> salivating at the thought of a mango it does, it does. Yeah. it's a mango but Mine you know what like, looks like you know those birds when they eat berries and then they poop and it looks like these beautiful purple ink splatters that's yeah. what mine is so you know what's so funny is like the green truly is greener on the other side because I like envy people who can paint so loosely like like yours like I have oh, yeah. like I my actual favorite art to collect is like abstract art and not like super realistic art that's my yeah. favorite art to collect I don't know if so. you can see behind me as I'm trying to point there's that dachshund with the cup of coffee yeah so that artist is uh Christina McCarty and like her drawings are simple in that it's easy easy line work but it's all about the delivery and the story that she's telling but I wish I could just let my guard down and just create and not worry mm -hmm. about is this realistic does this make sense will people get it does it tell a story like who cares yeah. like I, fe I feel like really good artists are able to like have no wall around them. I feel like I'm constantly behind a wall because part of me is a commercial artist. I create for others. I don't always create for myself. So yeah. learning how to, to kind of find that happy medium. I get it though. It's like, I wish I could just create, but I've definitely over the years as I've become more of like a professional fartist, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, am, I like to be known for having like not sloppy work, but like non-technical work. I don't yeah. follow any rules. I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is very freeing and there's a lot less expectation. So. Yeah. I think a lot of artists that you're referring to who seem like cool and collective are just, just as insecure as you are. They just are hiding it like everyone else. They're way better at, at um, <laughs> hiding they're cool and collected yeah yeah <laughs> inside they're screaming and crying exactly mm -hmm. and if you're finding your your paint is like bleeding into the wood or anything like that um you can always clean it up with a little bit of white watercolor if you have it um and oh. water it down uh, after okay. everything's dried out um, or you can just roll with it and turn them into extra needles on your cactus or draw something else in the background and some ink. Um, yeah. honestly, like some of my favorite pieces are, were because of mistakes. So, yeah, I think so. Mine bled out a lot. And so I mm -hmm. just kind of like leaned into it. And I think what I'll do is with the pen, I'll basically create more leaves and stuff with it like texture yeah perfect and i love that it has it has a lot of movement whereas like mine looks more like a like a scientific illustration which is your specialty yeah exactly all righty this is the part of the the zoom workshop where they just see my head and i'm like with my mouth open, <laughs> admiring what you're doing. That's my favorite part about this whole quarantine is people don't see me mouth breathing constantly. <laughs> I know, I'm always like, <laughs> all the time. I think it's like, I'm gonna be putting myself out there a little bit, but like, I'm, you know, so paranoid. I still will wipe my, you know, groceries down. I'm constantly washing my hands, um, really, very very i'm one of those people that's like uber mask compliant because i just don't want to get like i don't even want to get a cold let alone you know the rona yeah. but then like when i'm in my car you know i'm digging in the footwell for the mask that i'm about to put over my face <laughs> it smells <laughs> it smells like wet garbage i had del taco earlier and i burped in it and i threw it in the back seat the dog <laughs> sat on it but i will put that on my face and then i like but will wash my hands aggressively like sometimes i, I just don't make sense so yeah. you know but such is life <laughs> that I, don't, is life. I don't even remember the last time I cleaned mine honestly I know you know what it's just lean into a girlfriend <laughs> I, I change it once the mask and he kicks in <laughs> that's like those people that like wash their their sheets like once a week or something I was like who has time for that, Who does I don't that? 
That's like so much work. (laughs) Exactly. Or it's like me, like I, we have a linen closet back um, at our home base filled with towels. I use the same towel and then I wash it and then I'll just keep using it. I don't know why I have all of those towels. I know. I, I use the same towel too. I'm like, yeah, it's germs, but it's my germs. So it's, it's my fun. germs. And I just got out of the shower, yo. Give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who I'm saying that to. Give me a break. Like someone's like accosting me for it. <laughs> it's just our inner voices cr- criticizing. That, yeah. I have a lot of those. Mm-hmm. So do you ever like um you know when you're there's just kind of the catalog of animals that you have drawn like sea turtles um sloths snakes Mm -hmm. uh you know kind of oceanography centric things birds um how, how do you learn how to draw are you just like on the internet all day or do you try and like yes do you like live studies out in nature what's your approach yeah I am on the internet all day and Pinterest is actually really great for that um just because it seems to be a much better search engine for like creative stuff Mm -hmm. than um like photographers and everything love to post on Pinterest um and then I just create like a catalog for each animal like I have literally like cats and like dogs and really? birds yeah That's awesome. so my Pinterest is very organized um by like species and depending on what I feel like drawing for that day I'll just kind of peruse which catalog I'm interested in and then zero in from there but one thing I will say is be careful when you're like going through the internet because a lot of um websites like misidentify animals Ah. so try to follow like scientific based groups like Audubon Society um you know and yeah for like verification that you're drawing the actual animal especially if you're going to be doing like a commission or something because that's I've seen (laughs) that where people are like people are like oh this is a whatever animal and I'm like no it's not (laughs) I drew the wolf you wanted they're like this is a chihuahua (laughs) no no the thing on Pinterest said it was a she-wolf like you drew me Shakira no it's a wolf (laughs) Shakira howling at the moon (laughs) and honestly like oh oh. (laughs) honestly that's like the biggest reason why I want to go back to school um because I'm finding like I actually start caring more about the subject matter that I'm drawing so I'm, I'm going back to get my um, naturalist certification like for Whoa. to be able to identify animals properly and and do it in person so I'll be able to actually like see my references in person and possibly take my own photos and I think that's the goal is just to be like a one-stop shop like I print my own stuff take my own photos and actually am like a like a field artist, you know? Yeah, you could, oh, I'm even thinking of like, you could be like a guide or a docent and even do like field um, workshops. Like there's so mm-hmm. much cool stuff with that knowledge that like, isn't just for art. Like you, I feel like that's something that, you know, we're in this like totally technology driven society that like mm-hmm. even just like a good example is I've been around palm trees my whole life born and raised California. I know what a palm tree looks like, or so I thought. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, you know, sitting outside here, my airstream, and I was just playing with some paints and I was just looking at the palm trees going, I actually have no idea all the parts that make up a palm tree. And for years mm-hmm. I've been like kind of doodling them wrong, or I've been referencing drawings of palm trees. And it's just so crazy how different they are, how they grow. Some are skinny, some are fat. Um, yeah. the way that the, the branches and the branches or the, the bark is. So, um, yeah, just being able to like pay a little bit closer attention to the things around you is sort of a humbling experience because everything is kind of at the peripheral and you don't actually really know what anything looks like. So yeah, I think that's very cool that you're doing that. And it's just a, a way for me personally to slow down. Like I keep calling it slow art. People are like, what's your plans for 2021? And it's just to slow down and enjoy the process and be able to take 
you know, a month to work on one drawing and be oh able to like, I don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> like it's you. really hard. I don't have it either. But like, like I said, the way to get that is to practice. Like you just have to practice that mentality of like being like the traditional artist where they spent months just studying a specific animal like Darwin, you know, he like spent all this time focusing on this one butterfly and seeing the evolution of this one butterfly and how cool would it be to like be able to do something like that so yeah um so one of my one of my uh, favorite like accounts that i i kind of follow is um this woman and she's she's a lesbian and she does a lot of like home repair uh videos but mm -hmm. she's kind of gained this cult following because all of these straight women are like, okay, so maybe I'm a lesbian now because I'm super attracted to this woman who could like, <laughs> you know, you know, she does tool like tutorials, fixing laundry. She's just like this modern day, super gangster, lesbian, Martha Stewart, who's young and like hot. And she's just, it's funny, like this whole like persona that she has developed um well she hasn't developed it it's who she is but like how all these people have taken note of her and yeah. so she does this video where she's like you know i'm so much more than a person who knows how to fix things you know mm -hmm. i i'm more than someone who knows how to cook and clean like i have hobbies she's like i love i love staring at tits i look at tits all day long she goes on this huge thing and then she pulls up this thing on the side and it's all these different birds that are called tits yeah <laughs> bush tit we have tons of them here <laughs> i was like i love this woman and i was <laughs> dying and so i'm like i can't watch her videos like before in the morning before i have to go to the bathroom because i will pee the bed because she's so <laughs> funny um but yeah so i think you know if you are in nature you want to spend more time go and look at some tits you totally can <laughs> there's so many beautiful varieties out there Yes, and the, lots, lots of funny names, and they're just <laughs> funny looking. And birds are just so, I love them the most because there's so much variety and they have so many different skills. And they're just like these amazing prehistoric animals, you know? They've been here yeah. longer than most animals. But yeah. So I, um, I, have a, I have a question, a technical sure. question here. So um, in your drawing here, mm -hmm. which is, the, was this a, um, a, a digital drawing or a watercolor that you scanned? It was a digital drawing. Okay, but the digital stuff mimics some of the stuff that they, the technology is insane. It can actually yeah. mimic the, um, how it would respond in real life. But yeah. um, I noticed, you, so you're doing a lot of shading here, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to recreate in, in my piece. What's mm -hmm. a good way to, to do that obviously I want or maybe I don't want it to dry first what's your yeah. approach to kind of making it look organic um so the way I do it is um I don't know if this is organic or not because I'm, I'm not using a light source or anything it's just mm. A, a style, I guess you would say um, I'm doing dark pigment on the outside and then light as it goes in um, Got it. but in real life, I would assume that it would be dark in and then go light out. Um, oh, but yeah. this is just, like I said, like it's anatomically drawn correctly, but it doesn't interact with the world like it would in nature. So, yes. um, but my technique is I go down with a wet paintbrush first and then, um, dry my paintbrush, just get a little bit, little bit of paint and then dip it into the color you want. I'm gonna do like a grassy color. So um, where you want it darkest is where you add the paint. So you're really working with the water and actually letting the water that's on the base do the work. Yeah. And then if it's doing too much work and it's letting it bleed too much, then I dry my brush and I kind of blend it in myself. You put it in its place. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm literally salivating because those look like mangoes. <laughs> no, I'm so hungry now. Uh... I don't even know if mangoes are in season right now. 
I mean, I feel like in Singapore where I'm from, they're in season year round, but that's because there's no seasons. It's only summer there. Yeah, that's very true. Very cool. But luckily with, with wood, it seemed like paint doesn't really bleed as much than with paper. Oh, my dog is like making some crazy noises. Oh, Jack. Her, <laughs> she has, um, Jack's a Frenchie, right? Yeah, French bulldog. Okay, yeah, French bulldog. Um, and fun fact, her dog and I have the same body type. It's basically <laughs> like this kind of like meatloaf shaped, like squared off body. And then like a really flat butt and then like <laughs> just limbs. Um, so I, I, I connect with that dog on a spiritual level. Um, he's pretty amazing. Yeah. If he likes you, he'll give you some flagellants. Oh, well then homeboy is obsessed with me because <laughs> I went to Brittany's place. Um, she's this fantastic new, new place. And I was there maybe like a half hour, 45 minutes. And I got like, I got the jacked hello, like probably like six times, which I didn't even <laughs> think was like, possible for an animal. So he, he was draw excited. That. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a, a painting a friend gifted me and it's just of a Frenchie with like a poof of air coming out of its butt. <laughs> and I was like, that's so accurate it's yeah I mean talk about anatomically correct drawings right mm -hmm. what are you what part are you working on now the... I'm doing like the little stones that are on the ground um I'm gonna do just like really wet droplets and then kind of drop a little bit of pigment in each one to let it kind of do its marbly thing So if you drop some pigment in there. You, so you started with the pigment or you started with the water? Started with the water. Oh yeah, okay. And see so yeah, how like- I'm each, listening. <laughs> each, each little blob is kind of taking on its own amount of pigment, which makes it look, I guess, more organic. But all of my pieces are so different. It's really just like depends on the day. And I keep saying that, but it's so true. Like I mean, you know, a really like the creative process is so much about what you're feeling like in that moment. And you mm -hmm. talked about working on the same piece for a long period. And I think that's why mm -hmm. I can't do that. Is yeah. what um and why I also have um I people always ask me to do logos. Um mm -hmm. and I don't like doing those, I only do four clients a year for that because it's a really long process and what I'm feeling in one day I might not feel the next day and right. um yeah it's definitely like you have to be in the emotional mindset to just focus on that one long-term piece because yeah your your mood can change day to day um and it's hard sometimes to get that creative spark back halfway yeah. through a piece and like keep the same style too like I've noticed yeah. like because I'm playing with techniques constantly like the beginning of my piece I could be drawing a feather a certain way and then towards the end that same feather is looking really different than the other side of the drawing so yeah that's the other thing but I mean I don't know it's it's just a, a balance of like finding things that you're interested in and you know, testing with them, playing with them until you decide what you like. Yeah. I think that's why I, I've been a, like a more successful commercial artist is that it forces, well, it doesn't force me. It gives me the opportunity to constantly do something different. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and I, I've talked about this with you before is um, sometimes people think that like, oh, that's so cool. You can draw in any style. But mm -hmm. then they don't, then I think like, okay, well then what's my style? And I understand that even though I could do lots of styles, I'm constantly interjecting like things that I'm known for, like mm -hmm. the way that I letter, the way that I do a composition, the colors that I use. But, um, 
yeah, sometimes it's like, I understand that's a compliment, but that's hard to hear. It'd be like, oh, you can, yeah. you know, you can do anything. Like, I don't even know what your style is. You can do anything. I'm like, <laughs> you're like a chameleon. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want people to recognize my stuff off the street. And that's why I, I think one of the things I love about yours is I've seen other, like, not versions of yours because I don't know if they've come before or after you or, or where yeah. they are in the world, but I've seen other people do like these kind of fantasy scientific drawings, but I can instantly tell when it's yours and when it's not yours, which is a really cool thing. So, yeah. and that takes years and years of practice and, and confidence and learning. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to stick to the same medium either. Cause I I've heard a lot of people say that, like, they're like, oh, I'm a insert medium, like artist. I'm a watercolor artist. I'm a oil painting artist. Like that's mm -hmm. great. Great. If that's what you're super into at that point in time in your life. But I've always loved the idea of just being very flexible and open with what kind of tool I'm using when I'm drawing and painting, mm -hmm. because like, I just don't want to be pigeonholed into one thing. And that's what I have to be for the rest of my life. You know, yeah. there's a lot of artists that get burned out and they're like, oh, like I stuck to the same style, to the same medium. And now that's what people expect me to do. So I have to do it. Um, and I never wanted to do that. So I love drawing on wood. I love drawing on paper. I draw on denim jackets sometimes. Um, I love you know. your denim jackets. Stuff. Yeah, like, like I just posted wanted one of your stories. Yeah, I just want to play. Like, I want to play for the rest of my life. I don't want to ever feel like I'm working, and that's my goal. So, yeah. Um, um, for like, um, in your bio. So, if you you know have the box, you'll see um, Brittany where you can find her and um, all of her information. But she defines herself as a mixed media artist, and mm -hmm. so you know you touched on that, like being able to work with lots of different things. Um, mm -hmm. What are your like favorite mediums to work with either in terms of the tools or like what you're painting on? Like, obviously I've seen you do a lot of wood pieces. You talked about that at the beginning. Um, but what are your like go-to favorite tools? Um, if you could just do stuff for you all day long. Um, I, I mean, it's in, it's in my name and I know I said not to stick to one medium, but I can't <laughs> divert away from ink. I just love working with ink. Um, there's something very traditional and kind of brings me back to my Vietnamese heritage of working and painting with ink too. So not only using pen work, but painting with it, um, like the indigo, like colors and um, using like the watercolor that's like liquid it's much like ink um okay. and uh the ability to use pens to kind of like hone in on the detail is really fun for me um regardless if I'm layering it with acrylic or watercolor or whatever other medium I'm using yeah so. yeah so you did a gallery showing um featuring mm -hmm. some of your work was most of it um did you how do you pick what's going to go in there? Is it kind of based on the subject matter or do you try and create a theme based off of the mediums? Um, sometimes a theme just kind of happens. Um, I know a lot of artists who do intentionally um, pick a subject and then they start painting for that subject. But knowing me, I get, I get very unmotivated when I'm told what to do, even if it's myself telling me what to do. <laughs> Uh -huh. So like, I don't like, like those prompt contests because of that, that you see on social media where oh, you yes. have to draw like a specific, whoops, oh, where you have to draw like a specific thing. Um, I don't know. I just don't like rules. <laughs> and so like, I, I, but I find that I naturally end up doing some kind of theme on accident just because I'm in a certain mood for an extended period of time and it just yeah. naturally you know organically happens which if you allow yourself to just have fun you're most likely going to have a theme of work because it's it's just what's organically coming out of you so yeah yeah yours is looking amazing thanks 
So what I'm doing is I'm wetting my brush for this technique, um, getting some paint, and then putting down a shadow on one side of the object, and then wetting my brush again until it's clean, and then using the brush to kind of blend to the other side while like, it's okay, still drawing wet. it, drawing that pigment out. Yeah. So like moving that pigment so that it's blending and doesn't look so harsh. So you'll notice the brush that she's using has a really fine point. Is there a size mm -hmm. or do you know what kind of brush that is? This one's a number two, which is my favorite to work with. Um, and it's a it's round brush, right? A round brush, yeah. So that is a little bit harder to do on this scale with this um, crap brush that came with your kit. <laughs> and I just want to say for the record, I did not want to make and choose this brush. Um, <laughs> when I was creating these kits, a big thing for me is um, not to make things cheap because I want to devalue, but I also feel like making art accessible is so, so mm -hmm. important. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's very overwhelming to go into a store and buy all the things. There's that, that meme like, you know, why buy something for, you know, $20 when I can do it myself with $150 in supplies, right? Yeah. So um, I wanted to make the box, you know, affordable and, and kind of give you the, the foundational tools. So it's really hard, honestly, to find a bulk order of the same size brush. Everywhere I yeah. looked, you would get sets that ranged from small to large. And so I wanted to create some consistency. So that's why you guys have this brush. Um, but like I said, most of you have a paintbrush of some sort that you can use for this, or you can go to Michael's. Um, if you're working with something bigger, you might be able to have a little bit more control with this, but um, you know, work with what you got. Yeah, so. and I mean, I feel like when a lot of like techniques are discovered using the things that you have, like so mm -hmm. in, in this instance for using a much bigger, thicker tipped brush, um, there's other techniques you can do where you, um, like I said, you wet the area first, the whole area with your brush, and then go through with the color and put the color down. And then if it bleeds all over the place, that's fine because the whole place is, the whole thing is wet. And then you take your brush, completely dry it on your paper towel, and then you can use the edge of it to erase the part that you don't want anymore. Wipeies on wipeies, I dig it. Wipeies on wipeies. But I mean, it, it doesn't need to look like it's controlled. That's a personal preference for me, but. Like I'm, you'll see here on mine, let me focus this here bad boy. So I have a lot of bleeding that's kind of coming beyond and I don't even care right now. Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm you're gonna, gonna go over this in black too, which, yeah, is, which is gonna be pen. good mm -hmm. and the pen. Um, and you know, if it's really bad, I can always find ways to embellish it. Like, and I, I'm not even tripping. Yeah. And then I'm gonna leave my skull unpainted and just use the color of the wood as bone color. Smart. I had this silver in this paint pan, so I actually used some silver. I cheated. Ooh, fancy. And I used some like bronze glitter in my um, antlers. Yeah. Why is that? Is that right? Well, I'm like, why is that word beyond me right now? Antlers. Antlers. And then for the sky, if you want to just like fill it in with your pen, you can do that. Um, yeah, that's like, you do fun. that a lot. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. So I talked about your time lapses. Um, what I feel like is one of the most remarkable, you do a lot of remarkable things. But one of the coolest things is covering large swaths of area using like an ink pen and um, all your stippling. So for those that don't know what stippling is, um, it's this kind of like dot work that you see in the mm -hmm. shadows of, of this black and white drawing. 
Um, and I have attempted to do stippling work. I started, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to do this stippling. It's going to be cool. Like four seconds in of doing this with my hands. I'm like, I regret this decision. Why did I do it? I'm not going to finish this. This is her. My hand already hurts and I need a <laughs> snack now. And then I start thinking about food and I completely abandon the project. How do you do that? Like, do you have to mentally get in a place? Do you have a podcast playing? Like, how do you zone out and just do a large piece of area? You're not even drawing at that point. You're just doing the same motion over and over again. How do you get in that spot? So that actually started with me. I first was doing a lot of line work where I was, I was shading with lines and I found it was really hard for me to draw a straight line. Um, and I naturally am kind of an anxious person. So my hands shake almost all the time. Um, yeah. and so like I just rolled with it and I used the shake of my hand to, to kind of just allow it to so like that's literally how it looks when I'm drawing like my like hands you're just shivering over. you're just yeah you're so just it's like fidgety. I'm just going with the flow of like my body and what it's saying it, it's okay doing and I'm like okay let's just uh let's do that and not only that but be very careful about um the pressure like if you're very light-handed then you're able to like do a lot more dots than if you're intentionally what? pressing down every time um, I'm a white knuckler. I have, I have the hand dexterity of Shrek. Yeah. So I, I tend to like get, you know, I'm like going to snap the pen in half sometimes because I'm yeah. so tense. I don't know how to just relax, but yeah, I could see like, if it were really cold and your, your, your teeth just chatter and it kind of just goes like it just, and it's like on that rhythm. Like I yeah. imagine like that's kind of what your hand is doing. It just kind of hits this rhythm and you're just. Go, 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 go. It's, yeah, it's just therapeutic. Honestly, there's times where I feel like I'm going to fall asleep while I'm drawing. Cause I'm just like, so like in the zone. And then like <laughs> three hours later, I'm like, where am I? <laughs> so, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I know I'm like, I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but it's just, it's, everybody is so different and everybody has their own reasons for stippling. I know there's some people who just like, they love like being hyper detailed. You'll see those like portraits of like famous people that are made entirely of dots. And that's yeah. just like, that's like a whole other level. Like I'm not there and I, I don't want to get there, but it's pretty amazing that they can do that. Um, my dots are more because, um, I'm uncomfortable drawing lines and like people wouldn't think that if they saw my work, they're not like, Oh, yeah. she looks like she's not good at lines. <laughs> like, no, they see dots. So they're like, I don't know. <laughs> I actually did not know that. Yeah. I would yeah. have assumed you're very comfortable with line work. Yeah. Well, I like organic lines because if you make a mistake, like nature's full of them and it looks natural, but like drawing straight lines, like this is the worst. It's like almost as bad as a circle. But if you want to draw straight lines, then my, my biggest advice would be to just practice the motion of doing it and like get a piece of paper. Um, and I have courses for this too, like getting comfortable with line work. Um, and just learn, like get comfortable drawing lines in different directions, like up and down. And then you can kind of find out like which direction you're most comfortable drawing. So some people like doing bottom to top, some people like pulling, you know, left to right versus right to left, but you're never going to know that without practicing first. So that's the best way to get comfortable with actually getting into a piece and, you know, taking all yeah. that time on the piece. There's um, a lot of controversy in the lettering world um, mm -hmm. about, about that, like the directions in which you, you draw. And mm -hmm. so sometimes artists will, are really only comfortable going left to right, um, down, um, top to bottom. So that mm -hmm. means as they're working through a piece, they, they rotate it. And some people say that that's cheating. But you know, yeah. who cares, right? If if that's kind of you know, it could be a mobility issue. Maybe you have um, you know a shoulder and elbow thing that it's harder to do those other directions. But mm -hmm. um, if you're looking 
to really develop your skills, it's good to practice all of those because um, I think a rude awakening for me, I've always actually been really good working in, in all sorts of directions. I don't ever really rotate my canvas mainly because I work usually in the midst of piles because I'm so sloppy <laughs> that I, don't yeah. have, I can't just move things around the way that I want. But um, a real kind of eye opener for me is when I started doing murals. You, you can only work, you can't move a mural and I'm sure yeah. you get large wood installations and large pieces. You can't just move a tree around a tree trunk and get it the way that you want it just so that you can get the perfect line. So being able yeah. to practice um, your line work is super important. Definitely. And I, I, I did take some art classes, but that wasn't my focus in college or anything. So I think that helped me a lot because I just didn't ever have rules that I needed to follow. Um, and honestly, the outcome, like that's all that matters is that you you had fun at, you know, mm -hmm. something that you can look back on and be like, I had a great time and I have great memories making that piece versus it was excruciating because I had to do it a specific way because that's what the rules say to do. Um. So um, I have a technical question. I've seen sure. artists use like a paper towel to mm -hmm. take away ink or if there's mm -hmm. too much water. What are your thoughts on that? Um, Is that bad? I've, I've done it before. I find it's better if you're doing it with like abstract art or something. Um, I have way too much anxiety to be putting like a piece of, you know, paper on my piece without like messing it up and just being like, okay, well now what do I do? You know? Mm. So, I mean, it depends on your technique, your, your, like what method you're using. Um, I know people like to put like salt crystals on their wet watercolor and it creates these cool like effects. Yeah, I've seen um, that. Yeah, that's a whole other level of like watercolor skill. <laughs> so um, I've yet to venture into that. Um, is that more water skill or is that the ability to let go? I don't know. It might be both because it might just be their, um, like their outcome is going to be way more abstract, like, abstract looking than mine, um, where I'm using watercolor more like you would a colored pencil um, mm -hmm. or like markers where that's way more controlled and you're able to draw like fine detail with it. Um, cause there's some people like, um, you know, El Elisa, she does those like landscapes, like the starry oh, sky. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So she uses those techniques, but she's going for like big expansive, you know, landscapes with like massive galaxies and everything. Um, where, you know, when you throw some salt on it, it creates these cool things. But if I'm doing like a small piece that has like all these tiny little details, something like some salt dispersing the color might distract from like the detail of the piece. Yeah, so that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I'm sure she does the, the paper technique where she pulls away the color for um, some parts of her galaxies. Mm -hmm. I'm adding some purple to my night sky. Yay. So is there, do you have any advice? Um, Cause I know that I am, I have done this many a time. Start a piece and mm -hmm. Um, I'm layering, I'm layering. It looks cool. It looks cool. Oh no, I've gone too far and it's muddy. Mm -hmm. Um, is there, is there a way to turn back from that? Or you just kind of start um, over or you lean into it? If it's still wet, you can completely dry your brush and try to dab it with the brush. And that's kind of similar to the tissue technique that you mentioned, except you have a little bit more control because it's a smaller, uh, area that you're using. Um, or just lean into it and make it a big black sky like I have in my, um, in my piece and you can go over it with some pen work um, to like really dive into the darkness. Um, that reminds me of, um, there's this new tattoo style mm -hmm. that where they just color the whole arm one color. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, did someone mess up? <laughs> did someone get like a questionable tattoo that's like not appropriate now? I'm like, I feel what? like but that's like a that's like a thing now and it kind of yeah. reminded me of what you just said you're like just cover the whole thing black 
I know. I wish there was more like technical things you could do, but that's why I say like, if you're uncomfortable with painting, it's always best to like build on it. Um, I'm not taking my own advice though, cause I'm so impatient. So usually I just go in with as much paint as possible, but that just comes with practice and like knowing how heavy handed you are and you know, how you should paint. Um, yeah. Are you Shrek like me or are you not <laughs> Shrek? <laughs> Harriet's my donkey, in case anyone's wondering. She's a very cute donkey. So, like, um, I'll show folks here what's happening. See how um, I've got these little lines that they're kind of bleeding. I'm mm -hmm. actually really digging it because it kind of reminds me of, like, you know, like when you look at a forest off in the distance and it's just yeah. like kind of these outlines of trees. So I'm actually going to try and lean into that and see if I can get it to do more of that. Ooh, then you're going to draw little trees over there. That's I cute. Can. Well, just like the lines to kind of create that. I don't know if it'll do it. If it will, that would be awesome. Yeah, like I drew my circle for my piece and it actually was a little bit too small. So instead of freaking out, I just started making everything on the outside of the circle. And then I'm going to put my stars out here too. So oh, cool. um, stars all over the place. I cannot wait to see. Can't wait to see. <laughs> yeah, now, now my husband's talking too. <laughs> Gosh, with their dare they speak <laughs> in my presence. <laughs> I'm really excited um, to see what people create, and I hope they remember to tag Brittany um, and myself so that we can see your work and share it if you would like us to share it um and I always like to say and remind people that artists are really awkward like almost all artists I don't think I've met one artist that isn't awkward um yeah I'm just <laughs> so like because I'm saying this I'm speaking from like I have all these art art artists I follow and I look up to and I'm always so nervous to talk to them and like, especially at markets and you approach them and you're like, oh my God, am I so weird? This is awkward. Like they probably think I'm so annoying. Like none of those things are true. If anything, the artist is thinking all those things like at the same time. And they're like, I hope I'm not too awkward. I hope I'm, I'm like living up to the, the customer's expectations, you know, like, like, do they think I'm weird now? Did, did I ruin their experience, like their love for my art? Like, are they like, oh, never mind. I don't like her art. She's weird, you know? <laughs> so I also think I have those same feelings and I always think it's so bizarre or people will, um, like when people come up to me, they'll be like, oh my God, I, I follow you or whatever. And I love your work. And, um, you know, I love, I love following you on social media. And my first response is always like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, why is it, is it my mom is it Harriet and like sometimes I just forget like just I'm still a human being and like just because yeah. I know how to like have this one skill that like people have a I don't know they like build this idea of who you are and yeah, yeah I just think it's weird how we like project all these weird feelings and you know it's like they go to the grocery store and eat junk food like I do like just because yeah. they have this crazy skill doesn't mean you know they're they view the world differently than I do necessarily. So, uh, yeah. but I totally get that. I, I've been starstruck by a few artists and they're probably just like, uh, I just know how to draw. Like, why are you freaking out? Like Lisa <laughs> Condon is one of my heroes. I love her. And I've met her a few times and it's always like, I actually get starstruck and like nobody outside of the art world knows who she is. And they're like, uh, that's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> But yeah, I always like to put it out there because I don't mean to come off as rude if I just like Wallace and Gromit smile at you and you say things to me. It's like half the time I'm just so nervous. I don't want to like mess it up. So I'm just like, oh, cool. Thanks. 
<laughs> like, I always feel like you're super cool and chill and I'm like the <laughs> weird like yuck, 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 yuck. like when we met so do you want to tell everyone how we met yeah definitely oh you want me so, to do it? Oh, oh yeah I thought you were gonna tell the oh, story yeah. see speaking of awkward artists yeah sure okay silence <laughs> okay bye everybody <laughs> I'll let you tell it um so it was at the San Jose made um, uh, ho craft holiday fair, right? That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a couple years ago, almost three years ago. And um, I was right next to her and um, we happened, one of the booths in between us like canceled. So we like split like half the booth and got like bigger portions and um, I don't know. She was really cool. She had a dog and I'm super dog lover. I have my dog tattooed on me and um, my friend, she was like starting her jewelry art, uh, like making career. So she was sharing a booth with me and um, my Nana came to visit from San Diego and she's this little Vietnamese lady and she's like a firecracker and like she immediately was drawn to Angie because of her hair and her tattoos and her vibrancy. My Nana no, loves people. Uh, you mean dog. Hair <laughs> and dog. Yeah. Your Nana, first of all, your Nana is a freaking boss. This yeah. lady is amazing. She looks younger than me and she's what, like 80 years old? Oh, I'll, I'll oh. never say. <laughs> no, I'll never tell. But um, her Nana is a straight boss, is the coolest lady. I met her once and like, it's that one day was I met her and she left a seriously lasting impression on me and I love her to pieces. But yeah, yeah it's just so crazy. You run into, you run into people all the time. I'm under the camp of hashtag no new friends because I'm kind of an introvert. People think I'm an extrovert, but mm -hmm. I'm actually very much an introvert. And it's hard sometimes to like, you meet just so many people all the time. And Brittany was one of those people I met and I instantly was like, oh, we're, we'll be friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I think it's, it's a great way to meet people is just to um, go to places where y you have like something you enjoy doing. So of course, every time I go to those art events, I meet so many people I love because they're all into art and, you know, and we all love the same that, like, stuff. Yeah, they're seeing you kind of like at your happiest when mm -hmm. you get to show all the hard work that you're doing. Sometimes yeah. I'm like kind of in a bad mood when I do shows because people are mean and they're a dick. But yeah. for the most part, like I do get energy a little bit from those because I'm actually showcasing like what I've dedicated my whole life to and seeing like positive responses from other people gives me energy. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a good place. If you are seeing your favorite artist at an art show, that's a, probably one of the best times to approach them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know I miss them so much. I miss the ability to just see people's reactions to my work. And it's so cool how like, no matter what intention I had when, I, when I'm doing a piece, it's always trans, it always translates different for other people. You know, like they're like, oh, this reminds me of when I went, um, you know, camping with my family and I was, you know, sitting around a bonfire and they'll tell me this whole story. And it's like, totally not what I did that piece for, but it's great that that brings that out of them. And it, you know, I connect to people on a deeper level that I'm unable to connect to just by talking to them awkwardly. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why like a lot of musicians don't like to talk about the lyrics that they're writing because they, mm -hmm. it then like, if it means something to someone else, when they find out what the stories like the songs about they're like wait this mm -hmm. song's written about a dog like i thought it was it represented me and like my partner like whatever it is like me and my mom it's like the song was about a sandwich yeah so it's like that's why artists sometimes don't like to talk or they don't like to make music videos that mm -hmm. reflect the lyrics in the song because then it changes people's perception of the song and i think oh, art yeah. is is one of those things right like what you create isn't necessarily like what you want the end person to interpret good or bad and that's why yeah. I think like even like artists that do things like activist work um that's like a really brave thing to do because what you put out and it means for you can have a completely visceral reaction to somebody who has no idea why you created it mm -hmm. or they miss the point um you know or it's so abstract that they can't tell and they're like a, a child could do this yeah. so um yeah it's just kind of cool to to know that 
it can literally mean anything, but what it really means to you, like, is your secret. And there's something yeah. really like poetic about that. That's why when, when people ask me, oh, what does this like piece mean? Or like, why did you make this piece? My favorite response is like, how does it make you feel? Like, what do you see when you look at it? Yeah. Boom. And I feel like that's what art is. It's like what matters with art. It's like the viewership, like what, is, what does it invoke out of you? You know, does yeah. it make you happy? Does it make you um, question reality? Like, is it, you know, or is it just funny? Like there's art that's funny too. Um, but yeah. And sometimes it's like, I don't want to tell you. It's too personal. Like people do that with tattoos. What does yeah. that tattoo mean? It's like, uh, yeah. if it was really meaningful and personal to me, like, I don't want to explain it to you. Um, right. Or if it doesn't have a meaning, then you're like, oh, it doesn't have a meaning. And then it makes you look like, oh, so you just permanently marked yourself up with something that has no meaning. So it's kind of one of those things, like, it's almost, you probably like just shouldn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's one of those things that if you're really close to the person, are they willing to open up? Then, yeah. then it becomes um, a question that can be asked, but. Cool. So I think I'm done painting. Okay, cool. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm getting on the, the area where I'm overworking it and that I, there's no turning back. So, um, <laughs> but I, I really like what I did here. Yeah. I didn't get very, like yours looks really pigmented, mm -hmm. um, but that could be your brush. It could be the different style of paints. Um, what came yeah. in the paint tray for everyone is actually a really good high quality paint. So um, you can definitely go in there and really layer it on. You can get a better brush and get a much better coverage. Um, yeah. This is what I've got. And so now what are we going to do? Um, so you decide which part of the piece you want to add detail first. I suggest starting with botanicals or the antlers first because okay. it matters less if there's mess ups or anything because it's not a face, which mm -hmm. the skull is kind of a face. Um, so for the cactus, what you can do is just go ahead and outline them. Um, and that part's really easy. And if you find that your pen's like not drawing really nicely, try not to like smash it into the wood. Okay. <laughs> like allow don't it to crack it. Yeah, allow it to glide um, over the canvas. Um, um, so we're using microns, I should note. Thank you very much, Sakura of America. They have provided us with the pens for mm -hmm. um, this, which include the gold jelly roll pen, um, as well as your white jelly roll pen and these microns. So microns are, um, it says right here, an archival ink, and this is an alcohol based, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what, if they don't have this, everyone that's watching this video will have it. Are there any other pens that you recommend or more importantly, pens to avoid? Like what pens should people not use? Yeah, for so um, for this work on wood specifically, ballpoint pens are not going to work very well because the way they work, it's like, think of like, it's like a, the pen shaft and then there's like a ball that rolls around. Um, mm -hmm. So because the ball is gonna be skipping over all this texture on your wood, it's not gonna work very well and you'll have to like really smash it to get it to do anything. Um, so any, any pen um, that isn't a ballpoint should work. Um, okay. And it could really be any office, you know, supply pen that you have. Um, like the archival yeah, sharpies, pens, sharpies, like sharpies. Work. yeah, sharpies would work. Markers, um, even just like a colored pencil. If you want to outline everything with colored pencils, you can do that too. Oh, um, okay. That would work. It would be less crisp, but you'll get the similar effect. Um, so, I yeah. did on an artist residency in um, Iceland, and mm -hmm. it was really cool. Like every person there had a skill that they specialized in and um you know part of it is we're teaching each other our skill sets but then we're also going out in nature and we're doing studies and we're drawing and just really exploring the land it was probably one of the best experiences Brittany I actually want to introduce you to them I feel like you would Ew. love they do them all over the world and you apply and I got to meet some of the most incredible artists and I learned so much but one of the coolest things that I, I discovered was watercolor pencils. So it's a coloring yeah. pencil that's actually made with dried watercolor pigment, 
So you start by drawing and then you just take a wet brush and then you blend the colors together. So they would mm. sketch in their sketchbook out in the field. And then when we got back to the house, they would bust out their brushes and their water and they would like make these beautiful watercolor pieces. And I was like, I need that. So oh, okay. um, yeah, it was really, I had never even, I mean, I feel like I'd probably seen those in my life, but um, I immediately went and I bought them and I carry them with me, especially when I'm doing a lot of travel because it's mm -hmm. easier than bringing a bunch of stuff with you, <laughs> brushes <laughs> and paint trays and. Yeah. And then with um, the technique I'm doing for the cacti is um, when you look at a cactus, they rarely have just like one spine coming out of a pore. I guess you can call it a pore. Um, they usually have like multiple just like coming out of one spot. And so what I like to do is just kind of do like a little scribbly, almost like a messy X um, on the spots of the cacti. And uh -huh. they do go in like sensical rows. So I'll do that like somewhat at an angle here. So I did like, here's a row of them, there's a row and then just oh. go down at an angle. So it gives it more of like a anatomical-ish look, you know? So you're mimicking what it looks like in real life. A lot of plants especially are very symmetrical and they have like a pattern to them. Yeah, there's, um, well, there, my favorite shop is called Fractal Flora. And, mm -hmm. but the word, the word fractal is this idea of this like symmetrical thing that just kind of keeps going. And you really do see that happen in nature. Um, mm -hmm. it's incredibly symmetrical, even though we think about things being organic and fluid and, um, mm -hmm. but nature is really remarkable. The geometry of things and how it exists. Very, very cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm really trying my darndest to not grip the pen. Like <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take someone out. It's like actually working to your advantage because you're getting like a nice thick outline and it's <laughs> kind of breaking up the, the color that you're talking about. Plus you can always build up on a line. If you find that you're like wobbly or getting crooked, you can just go over it a few times and fill it in to make like those nice thick outlines that you see in like graphic illustrations. Yeah. Well, what's really great. So everyone in this um, box got a micron number two, but they mm -hmm. go up to um, like a double zero one to like a 12. And mm -hmm. I actually have a 12 here. Um, which I will show you. Ooh, those are new. Yeah. It's sort of amazing. Is it like a Sharpie almost? Kind of. I mean, look at that. It's huge. Oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so. That's the other thing about drying on wood um, and why I say not to smash it is because Micron pens, if you, if you smash them into wood, the little tiny nubbin bends and yeah, it still works, but it, then it just, it isn't a consistent um, sized line anymore. It'll just be all like fat sometimes then go skinny. Yeah. And then it also impacts the angle that you can draw at. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, you can then only work the pen if you're at a 90 degree and yeah. Um, it's weird like they get kind of finicky if you're if you're not friendly to them yeah be nice but that usually so, really happens when i'm in a hurry too so if you pace yourself so, you should be fine so here you can see that um like i have the branch in here and you know what it doesn't matter for the people mm -hmm. at home like don't <laughs> let this stuff bum you out you should be really excited um yeah so there's tons very, of very there's, cool. there's tons of artists that do that on purpose and they just lean into it I'm like i'm pretty sure people yeah i'm pretty sure genevieve like some of her pieces do that too like where the the watercolor just bleeds into each other yeah there's no she just kind of lets she just tells the story and then like lets the the detail work actually not be part of it. 
Mm -hmm. um, and there's something really, really beautiful about that. I don't know if she would agree with that, but <laughs> I, I like, you know, because every artist is like, I right, put a lot of work into it. So I don't want to take away from anything. But yeah. I, I really do love that, like, the storytelling is the key. And that's why, you know, when you look at scientific drawings, they're not trying to tell a story. They're trying to educate you and they're trying to um, right. really get you to see the beauty and the detail. So it's just two very different approaches. So when you work on a piece like this, what's the part that you look forward to the most? Is it like getting to the outline? Is it the, the kind of ideation and dreaming it up? Um, I would say like the, the part where I color in the background is really fun because it's just kind of mindless and doesn't require constantly looking at the reference part. Um, mm -hmm. drawing it out and getting it to lay the way I want it to and just like look nice all together that's the hardest part for me um, because it it's so dependent on like if it looks right you know mm -hmm. um, and then if the paint's all like sloppy and if it's like looking kind of funky like that actually adds to the character I think so I don't mind that as much but I have a lot of fun doing the stars that's my favorite part two. Yeah, I definitely incorporate a lot of the, the star. I call them sprinkles. Yeah, they're just so fun. And they like really bring the piece to life and add movement to it. So that's probably my favorite. Yeah. So how long have you been doing like this kind of in this professional capacity? only since I met you three years ago. Are you serious? Yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Wait, that was your first show then? That was my first show. Shut the front door. I had no idea. Yeah. Do you so, just like had this talent and you're not doing anything with it? I was just sitting on it for like probably like 10 years you of basically my work robbed life. the world of like <laughs> amazing artwork and you should be ashamed of yourself I cannot believe that you were not doing this professionally before yeah um I was like a I was like an account manager for an audio visual company and it okay, was that just you yeah it was just not working out um I didn't love it they could tell I didn't love it and we basically parted ways and I instantly started looking on the job market for similar opportunities and like the business world uh, marketing kind of background stuff and I was just not feeling it I didn't want to play the game anymore I didn't want to work hard for somebody else I wanted to do something for me and something just clicked and I was like why don't I put my obsessive compulsive disorder tendencies towards something that I'm actually enjoying um, and build upon a talent that I just haven't nurtured um, and just decided to start drawing and see where it took me. And I leave my, um, I, I leave my old, my first post ever on Instagram up, even though I despise the drawing because I think it's the worst drawing in the world. Um, just as like a frame of reference, because I feel like artists are so hard on themselves and mm -hmm. it's a good way to remind myself that only three years ago I was drawing like that you know like which I'm sure was still like phenomenal compared to <laughs> like what most people are comfortable creating yeah and you know like it just took a lot of practice and a lot of me just trying to find myself and artistically um, I know that the very first thing I'm going to do once we're done with this is go look at your very first post. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> because I can't, I cannot believe that you were not doing this. Like even like as a hobby, you weren't doing it. No, like, nothing. I wasn't like, it's so weird. Like I, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I was a pastry chef for five years, so that was somewhat artistic. Um, I feel like you're but, like El Diablo, but like you just kind of honed in on this skill within the, so basically everyone that's listening to this in three years, you will not be able to do this. Let's just be honest. <laughs> She's an anomaly. I want to set this expectation, but holy cannoli. 
Brittany, I had no idea. Yeah. I know. I told Tammy that um, recently and she was like, what? <laughs> oh my God. Tammy runs um, one of my favorite shops. I post about it a lot, Redemption. Um, she's a good friend of mine and she opened a store out here. One of the best boutiques in California, hands down, probably one of the best boutiques I've ever been to. And, um, mm. she only works with, um, California based artists that create locally. And, uh, I, were you wanting to reach out? How did, how did you end up getting in contact with Tammy? Um, I think you had posted something about carrying your stuff there and I was like oh I want to carry my stuff there too yeah um, I was like and I, I think I her. yeah I think I reached out to you and I was like hey should I talk to her and she's you're like oh uh, yeah why not <laughs> yeah she's like the sweetest but she's um like she just carries so many great artists it's kind of one of those like dream shops if you are an artisan to be in so yeah um, very, I like very spent, fortunate I spent so much money there um for I Christmas know. Uh, she has a lot of my money. Every time I drop stuff off, I'm like, uh oh, well, there goes all my money. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you do the stippling thing. Good for you. <laughs> I can kind of do it. But then like sometimes they don't look like dots, they look like dashes. Which you could totally like make that your style though. Yeah, it's like a chicken kind of <laughs> just came, came through. <laughs> oh yeah. And if you want, if that bugs you, like try to hold your pen more upright when you go and don't work too fast left to right like moving it around um if you stay like close then your pen will go up and down versus left to right and all around <laughs> that's a good tip <laughs> but that usually comes too with just patience and not working too quickly i don't know what this patience is that you speak of but it sounds wonderful <laughs> Right. I think that's somebody's name somewhere. Patience, yeah. Or when people go like, oh, do you go to the gym? And I'm like, who's Jim? <laughs> I don't know. Like, like Jim and Pam. I love yeah. that. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's that Mariah Carey meme, like, mm, I don't know her. That's me in the gym. <laughs> I don't know him. <laughs> I love it. It's coming to life, y'all. Right? See all that darkness. I just love black ink work. Wow. Yeah, I'm actually um, really digging how this pen goes over the ink. I feel like sometimes I've used like the wrong pen and then it just like gunks up with the watercolor mm -hmm. and then it actually doesn't draw anymore. Um, yeah. That usually happens with like really expensive technical pens I've noticed, um, which is what we're using, um, that have like that little tube. It's like a little cylinder that just deposits ink. Mm -hmm. Where I think microns have more like a, um, almost like a Sharpie tip, like a little, little nubbin. <laughs> That's a technical term, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes. It's the science word. <laughs> Actually, the in the, it's in the art, art industry. Mm -hmm. So most people wouldn't know it. <laughs> other reason why I wanted to go get more science degrees and classes and, and stuff is so that I'm not calling things just like random names it's the thing with the thing yeah well like technical writers you know are a godsend because they like know how to explain things and like mm -hmm. I just released um 
the uh, bandana that I did as a collaboration with Style Her Empowered. And mm -hmm. I'm writing this blog post on my favorite ways to wear a bandana and how to tie them. And I found that that is a very hard thing to write because I'm like, so then you put this part and it goes over the thing. And then you want to take this thing and then the loose part, you want to like tie it here. <laughs> so, <laughs> basically, I've just created a like an, you know, a blog of gibberish. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, like people who can find words and use them like adults, um, good for you. I know, yeah. like put them together and have them make sense. I feel like everyone should understand what I mean when I say nubbin, like it's a little nubbin, right? <laughs> it's very obvious to me. Wow. Yes. So um, what Andy is doing is just accenting a lot of the parts of the antlers. So um, go along, um, I call it, I'm calling it the wood grain, even though it's not wood, it's an antler. Um, and in the spots where you think shadows would be, um, or you just want to show the texture, you can follow along with a line and then just go parallel with it and shorter and shorter. And that kind of creates dimension um, yeah. in the piece. And you can do some dot work. And it, there's really not a perfect way to do it. I know there's a lot of artists that are very technical with it, but we're not gonna do that for this piece because we're just having fun. No technical stuff here. And this um, skull that we're drawing is actually um, a, what is it called? It's, a, it's like an indigenous to California, all of these species are, which is another reason why I want to become a naturalist so I can understand how to explain these things to people. Yeah. Well, I would absolutely love for you to come to Palm Springs and we do like a nature draw day. There's so yeah. much stuff out here. Or just like go on a walk and like take pictures of things and then draw them later. Yeah, yeah, it's really hot here. And that's probably a better thing. Or you can just Google it. <laughs> Google it over, you know, just some cinnamon buns and hang out and eat. How hot is it right now? I know it's pretty hot here. Yeah, you know, um, it was like 90 degrees yesterday, but it didn't feel like it because I think we had like a weird, that's one thing, it's really windy out here. So mm -hmm. I think it, it wicks away like a lot of the heat from the ground, but um, it hasn't gotten to like the 120s yet, which it can do in the summer. So we will mm -hmm. not be here for that. We're, we're trying to get out of Dodge before it gets too hot. Um, yeah. This Airstream won't really be able to handle it, but um, yeah, it, it's not too bad yet. In fact, it's probably hotter in this Airstream right now than it is outside. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, and like, you know, once it gets to like 90, because we're in California, right? It's like, the, it's dry heat, as everyone always says. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there's not much of a difference that you can feel between 98 and 102. Like, it feels the same. Yeah. So. Equally as sweaty. Yeah. I just, you know, my big concern is always the dogs, making sure that oh, the dogs yeah. are comfortable. So we have, I got this like, cool jelly mat that they can lay on that just feels cool all day long you know for mm -hmm. Harriet's nipples my dog yeah. <laughs> so I just realized I said so Harriet's many nipples. yeah I, she's got a lot to work with and now mm -hmm. I just realized I said Harriet's nipples on this video and nice. when you share this with your audience they're going to be like huh <laughs> so you're welcome now we have to rate it a different like what is it rated pg-13 now <laughs> I think we probably had to do that when I said tits earlier, even <laughs> though I was talking about birds. About birds, yeah. That's like when I was in elementary school, 
I think it was elementary school, we were supposed to pick an animal to do a presentation about. And I chose the jackass penguin so that I could say <laughs> jackass over and over again. <laughs> Without getting in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, the jackass penguin, like I'm presenting right now. This, <laughs> this actually it. explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this explains so much. I am a child still. Da, 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 da. And if you're getting to the stipple work, um, wherever you want shadow um, is where you want to concentrate the most dots. Um, and then yeah. what I like to do, I like to start in the dark shadowy spots first and then kind of thin out the space between my dots as I go out and build oh, on that. Good, that's a good tip. Where were you 20 minutes ago? <laughs> that, that's the impatient ADHD and me like always jumping ahead yeah <laughs> I do the same thing but I just I just called it you know being an overachiever so is that what that is okay because yeah. I'm certainly not that but <laughs> thank you for making me feel better about myself it's it sounds better that way you just have to repackage <laughs> it you know that's the marketing in you put a bow on it yes Some people like to do very loose dots all over the spot that they're working on. And then they do dots in between those dots. But I find that that's kind of nerve wracking for me because then I'm just like, oh no, it's a landmine of dots that I have to avoid. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're putting too much thought into it and that's not good. Totally. And then it's no fun anymore. And that's the biggest part about art. If it's not fun, why are you even doing it? Exactly. I feel like, um, you know, kind of in the last few years pre-COVID, there was a lot of this resurgence in like workshops. Workshops became a thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because this millennial generation, they started this whole movement about valuing experiences over stuff. And a lot of that came from the fact that, you know, so I'm, I'm technically Gen Z, but like, I kind of really close to the millennial group in that a lot of them came out of college and they couldn't afford homes. They're in crippling debt. So this idea of like spending money on stuff does not make sense for that type of, of, of generation that's kind of got, you know, financially screwed. But yeah. what it did was it made people double down on experiences. So like workshops became a huge thing in the last few years. And once COVID hit, I think that everyone was really bummed. They're stuck at home. But um, a lot of people started picking up new, you know, artistic habits. People started drawing more that weren't drawing before. Mm -hmm. um, people started, you know, cooking and just trying new things. So I'm really excited to just see kind of when things go back to quote unquote normal, mm -hmm. like what that's gonna mean for art educators and like kind of this new excitement of wanting to, you know, kind of hone in on the skills that they started at during quarantine. Totally. Cause there's, there's like a whole, like there's people that go and do drunk painting and they go over there with the intention of, I'm just doing this thing cause I need to get out and be away from my kids. Yeah. But then it was hard to find classes for like someone who wanted a little bit more skill and I think we're going to start to see a lot more of those people they're like look I was in quarantine for a year I learned how to do this like how do I get better so yeah it'll be really really cool oh you zoomed in oh I just moved I moved my camera so like hey. a little bit closer beautiful and I kind of um, had those little bleeding lines. So I'm gonna kind of lean into it and I'm gonna start drawing some trees. Cute. I love it. Can you see all the detail? Kind of? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Oh, I see what you did mean with the little thorns. I didn't even draw thorns on mine. You can have a non-pokey 
Yes, I, I've seen a lot of those out here, which is yeah. awesome because you know the little dogs. Baldy one. Yeah. Jack has no survival skills. He will walk into a fire, like, and he's done something similar where he's just like, let me just put my face in this bonfire right here. <laughs> There's no survival. Well, because he just has, he's only had to rely on his good looks. Harriet's the same way. Yeah. She's exactly. never had to, like, survive. <laughs> Like yesterday, Mark was like, I think Chuck's sick. He's like throwing up. And I'm like, ew, what happened? She's like, he ate a pine cone. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> That's period. It almost it was early on. It was like, don't eat that. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. Oh, I'm so scared. So now it's like something's going to happen to your body. I don't know what it is. <laughs> something's going to happen. You're on your own. So I'll tell what folks what I'm doing here. Yoinks. Um, I had some of the, that kind of bleeding ink into the wood grain. So now mm -hmm. I'm just kind of um, creating like a little mini forest. So it's then so I'm gonna put like some stars up here. Yeah. Some birds up in there. Some, get some chips. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I remember saying that to somebody. I was like, I have a lot of bush chips in my backyard, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Would you like some tea in the garden? <laughs> okay. So, can we use? Can we use a jelly roll over this? Yeah, totally. Um, if it's dry. That's the biggest part. Is it dry? When you touch it, is it cold? Well, I'm in the desert, so everything <laughs> is lukewarm. Everything is hot. Everything's hot and sweaty. Um, and the jelly roll is the other thing that is important that it rolls over like very lightly versus smashing. Um, so a good way to get it started is you can slap the top of your pen. Um, and then shake it a little bit. And then when you use like a, a scrap piece of paper, kind of just drag it along. I know you can't really see it on here, but until you start seeing the ink coming out and then you know you're good to go. Um, and my way of drawing stars and everyone has their own way. Um, there's no correct way. Um, I like to do, it's basically a cross. and then connect the cross with like little angled lines. Beautiful. And then you can kind of dot it in with some more ink if you're finding that it's not white enough. And then if it's not white enough, you can leave it muted or just wait until it's dry and then go over it with the second layer, just like you and would with that other layer. Yeah, yeah, that's typically what I do. Cause sometimes I feel like if you keep trying to draw over it while it's wet, it actually just takes away the ink. It yeah. just kind of like gunks up. So. Um. And then when you do the little dots of stars, just do like little circular motion, kind of dabbing it. Dab. Like you would a sponge, dab dab. <laughs> So fun fact is every time I see um, Brittany's husband, it's a race to who can dab first. <laughs> and sometimes I'll be messaging her and like, if it, you know, I know it's end of the night. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go to bed. Good night. Dab for Mark. <laughs> Got to get that in. So fun fact, like, first of all, we just have like so much in common. Cause you're an Aquarius. Are you an Aquarius? I'm a Scorpio. Or you're a Scorpio. You're getting yeah. a phone call? How rude. No, it, it was like my, I don't know, it's like warning. Um, yeah. Connect to Wi Fi. I'm like, I am. Oh. Um, but we have like so much in common. One just like, you know, being artists and figuring out what we're doing. And 
Um, mm -hmm. But another weird one that I thought was kind of obscure and it might not seem like kind of weird, but I think it's weird just because I know the nature of their business. But um, both my husband and your husband worked at Tessa and they kind of started at the same time. They've never met, yeah. they don't know each other. But if you know anything about, if you've read anything about Tesla, it's a really hard place to work, really, really oh, tough. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't make it there past a year, maybe two years, a very few group of people do. And they were part of that group. So Craig's no longer with them, but Mark's, Mark's holding down the fort. Yes, he is. It was the end of the quarter yesterday. So today yeah. is a chill day. Good, good, good. The tech yeah. world is crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm not in it anymore. Yeah, same. This part is so oddly satisfying and relaxing. Yes, that's why I love it. And it's just like random that it looks the best when it's random. So like you don't need to put too much thought into it. But if you really into aesthetics and everything, I always say odd numbers look best. And the rule of three, if you have like mm -hmm. little bunches of three stars, those look really cute. And then if you have a, the gold jelly roll pen with you, um, those look really cute on the stamen of the flower, for instance. So you can highlight the little oh. tiny dots on there. Um, or you could do some parts of the antler too would be really cute with gold um, or the grass blades are really nice. Anywhere where you think like the sun would catch and like highlight an area would be nice with gold. Cool. And then um, just for reference, so the gold pen, again, also from Sakura, but I don't know if this has a size. Did it come in size? I think the metallics might just be one size, but the jelly rolls, they come from like really, really fine point to like what we have is a 10, which I think is like mm -hmm. a the largest it maybe goes for the jelly roll pen. So you'll get like different um, amount of detail and kind of thickness of the stroke of the yeah. line, so. The bigger ones are always easier to work with, I find though, because um, the small ones clog up easier and. Yep, that's why we went with this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, big ups to Sakura for hooking it up. I think they gave me these ones too. <laughs> yeah. They've been really, really great. They love supporting artists and um, yeah. I think I'm gonna fill my moon in with this here gold. Yeah, I was gonna suggest that too. You can do that. Or you can do a white, like fully white moon if you wanna see that white pop from the wood. Um, I actually think I'm going to use some of the white in my skull to lighten it oh. up because one thing I do like about these jelly rolls is it's a gel based ink so you can kind of manipulate it a little bit and blend it before mm -hmm. it dries, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and you can use it for highlights on your skull too. So in areas yeah. where you didn't do the dots can be where white is. I actually use a jelly roll pen as white out in my passport when I'm traveling Smart. Um, because I am a horrific speller <laughs> and um, I spell everything wrong all the time. One of my favorite ones, spelling errors that I did was at a holiday fair and I mm -hmm. made this huge elaborate chalkboard piece and it said, um, with this illustration and it says it's better um it's better to or treat yourself because it's better to give than to receive so why don't you give to yourself oh my god <laughs> but then I wrote receive wrong because I before e except after c apparently yeah and instead of fixing it I just put a post-it note over it and I was like I know there's a spelling error it's part of it's part of the charm just buy something <laughs> But like so many people took pictures of it and I'm like, everyone just is gonna see how lazy I am that I didn't redo it. 
that's a part of your charm though it's a part of my charm is being is that I don't read good (laughs) I think that's the biggest reason why a lot of people ask me why I don't do tattoos because my art lends very well to like tattoo design and I'm like that's the biggest thing for me is like I don't spell very well I'm pretty sure I'm dyslexic um and also I just I'm not patient and I don't like sitting down for that many hours like when I'm drawing I'll I'll draw and then I'm like all right I'm gonna go to have a snack I'm gonna go you know do something at the park and then come back to this drawing like tomorrow and I just can't just sit down for hours and hours drawing on somebody permanently (laughs) right I mean that's also for me one of the reasons I I stopped doing weddings I Mm -hmm. hated that I had to spell everything and you know you can't have a mistake yeah apparently brides don't like it when you spell their father's name wrong on a (laughs) chart and names are so easy to spell wrong because they're all spelled so differently no I can't believe we're almost done I know I'm sort of bummed out because that means I have like work to do no no I have to do adult things and maintain my house well while we're doing all while we're kind of wrapping up here I'm just kind of doing some highlighting and I'm gonna have to go over again with my mic on in a sec but tell us where people can find you um what kind of things you offer in your shop Yeah, definitely. Um, So right now, the only shop I have open is on my website. And um, it's just my tag that is in everything. So it's my name, Brittany Paul, dot ink with the K. And that's my website too. It's just www.brittanypaul.ink. Yes, I did buy the domain dot (laughs) ink. Everyone's always like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes. (laughs) Um, So... You can find me there and links to all of my social media are there, same tag. Um, I'll be only doing one art market uh, series this year and it's gonna be in Livermore, which is East Bay. It's about half an hour from San Jose, but it's a very beautiful place to just hang out. If you are into wine tasting, you can spend a day out there and we're doing the social distance thing from May to November so I'll be out there once a month um, doing that if you want to meet me Um, and then I'm planning on being in galleries too and the thing is with a lot of my original pieces it's really tough to translate all that detail into a small little LED screen Um, so to see it in person um, I'm hoping to be in some galleries out here soon Um, very cool yeah but um yeah we can get your prints we can get originals you've got merch Mm -hmm. um you also do something really cool that people probably don't know is like you have harry potter themed stuff Mm -hmm. um so it's not just animals but everything is in that same really like beautiful kind of fantasy meets science style um, which i really really dig yeah Cool. And then we're also Instagram. Are you, what, your Patreon? Patreon Which, uh, too. Yeah. Um, and uh, same thing, just look up that and all of those links should be on my website. Um, and I'll include it in here, um, at least in my Patreon members uh, who are watching this. And I'll also include it in the description link of this video for everyone that purchased a box that might not be in the Bobo bungalow. And I do do workshops um, like that go over technicalities. So if you were watching this video and you're like, wait, how do I do those liney things and like stipple work? I actually have workshops where I go in depth on that and it's very technical. Sometimes we draw something specific. Sometimes it's just lines and dots and hatching and all of that. Um, so back to basics kind of stuff. Cool. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh you know I've been working on this but I only just saw it like on the screen Mm -hmm. it looks so good I'm so happy see here sometimes art looks like 
like you hate it until the very end when you're finishing it up. Exactly. Um, I'm gonna actually go over. I kind of like the, how things go over. It doesn't just have to be in the background. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, I am so excited for everyone to get your your goods and you know to rock um, your pin and your wooden sticker. Um, one of the things that I really, really appreciate and love about Brittany is how incredibly thoughtful she is. She doesn't just draw nature. She really lives about um, her entire life is about preservation and you know thinking about nature as a whole. And so when you order from her, she you know biodegradable packaging. She recycles a lot. Um, she's using sustainable materials. So if that's something that you're passionate about, like vote with your dollars, get some art from her because she she's really the whole package and she she's not a sister Mary fake about it. She really lives up to it. So um, yeah, we all I also, could strive I also to do that. To, I also tried to source a lot of my vendors locally too. So you can know that a lot of like my stickers are done by a friend that does all of my wood stickers for me. So you're not only supporting me, but you're supporting a bunch of other makers that I collaborate with like Angie. Yeah, that's such an important thing too. Cause yeah, there's like, it's a whole supply chain. You don't just support mm -hmm. the artist. It's all those other vendors that rely on us to give them work and to buy materials. And a lot of times local vendors will spend a lot of time trying to find materials. And I think a good example is like what happened with the Suez Canal recently, that ship, you know, decided it was gonna heal and like block everything. And anyone who's buying supplies overseas kind of got screwed because they're like, mm -hmm. uh, when am I gonna get my stuff? It's gonna be way more expensive. So, you know, another very important reason to kind of go local. But yeah. um, if you want to learn more, like give Brittany a follow. Um, let me zoom this out so you could see my final piece. We want you to tag us in your work so we could see what you've done. If you've got questions or you're you've hit you know a snag, like don't be shy, reach out to us. This is what we love to do and we want to help. Um, and we want to at the end of the day make sure that you're happy so that you will keep creating because that's the whole point. So um Yay. So thanks so much for having us. I hope you had a good time. I mean, I always want to try and hang out with you, even if it's over the internet, but um, yeah. Is there any, anything else you want to add? Um, no, I mean, other than just have fun with it. And um, art is all about exploration and curiosity. And if you are too nitpicky, nitpicky about like the how, then you won't remember the why, like, why are you doing it? You're doing it to discover yourself and to just have fun again. Um, a lot of us forgot what it's like to just have fun. And I think that's what's most important when it comes to art. Exactly. And if you can drink while you're doing it, while the kids are sleeping, like A plus good effort, you should do whatever yeah. you can. <laughs> <laughs> drink, drink or have a decadent snack like anything exactly. that just makes you lose up and, yeah. yes yes well thank you again um i we are very very lucky to have you like super super lucky and um if you've got any questions you know where to find us so yeah thanks, thanks for guys <laughs> okay let me stop the recording because i will forget and then i'll add all this into the recording